Welcome guys, I'm here at Liquor King, of course, and uh, today I got a special guest with me. How you doing? Pretty good. Thanks so much for having yeah, me. Yeah, definitely. I know you've seen this guy plenty of times, Homeskate. Uh, the product, we carry like the whole lineup. So uh, we got here to talk about a few products. Let's get into it. Absolutely. Um, yeah, first off, uh, my name's Mike. I'm the national brand manager for Homeskate. And uh, I appreciate Liquor King bringing in our whole portfolio into multiple stores of theirs. Uh, the company was founded in 2019 doing single barrel rums. So basically just sourcing from distilleries all over the world, trying to bring exceptional high quality rums to the US market, things that are just not available, underserved, high ABV, no additives, more meant for sipping. Okay. So we also have another core line that's more cocktail friendly. Okay. But today we're gonna get into some of the single barrels. And one of our latest releases is our Venezuela 15 year. So this comes from the Santa Teresa Distillery. Okay. I've been making rum for over 200 years. And this company is based out of? Venezuela. Uh, okay. So this no, is uh, Homeskate is based out of New York. Okay. I live in Austin, so I'm often in the Texas okay. market running around doing okay. these things in education. Yeah. But yeah, we're based in New York and that's where we warehouse. Okay. So typically when we buy a barrel, it'll be shipped to New York and then we'll bottle it there. Okay. We are trying to buy from origin as much as possible, keep economy of origin, the people that are producing the rum. And sometimes when possible, we'll actually bottle there as well. Okay. So the cases will be sent to New York rather than the barrels. Okay. So they'll, they'll dump them at origin, bottle, label, and then send us the cases. Really, there's no aging in New York? No. There will be yeah. some. We're always transparent about exactly where the rum was produced, where it was aged. So on the back of the label, and sometimes on the front, this says 100% tropically aged, because this did fully age in Venezuela. Okay. So it says the same on the back. This Venezuela rum is produced, Distillery Sofa, which is a code name for Santa Teresa. 100% column still rum has been aged 15 years in Venezuela in okay. mixed bourbon casks and bottled in New York State. So if there was aging that went either to the UK or to New York for some period of time, okay. we'll have that breakdown on the bottle. Okay. So we want people to know exactly what they're tasting. We don't make this rum, we're sourcing it. Right. So we want people to know exactly where it came from and what it is. And I love transparent companies. That's probably the best part about dealing with a company that you just don't know about, reading the bottle and enjoying the, the spirits. So, yeah. Venezuela. Yeah. And you said, what, how old? So this is 15 years okay. aged in next bourbon barrel. It's 55% alcohol by volume from Santa Teresa. So you might be familiar with them from yeah. their 1796 release, Definitely. which is a Solera, which is, an, is another code name for non-age stated. Right. So that's a blend of barrels of, of various ages. Okay. And that's 40% alcohol. Questionable if there's additives in that. Okay. But this is a pure expression of what this distillery is capable of. So true 15 years in barrel, single cask, 110 proof, no additives. That one. Very nice. I got the caramel notes. Absolutely. For sure. Caramel, butterscotch, vanilla. Yeah. yeah. All those classic notes you'll pull out of a barrel from, for sure. from extended aging. For sure. So very much appealing to bourbon drinkers and rum, rum drinkers alike. Yeah, I can see that, especially on the bourbon drinkers. It's not like as sweet as you think it would be. Yeah. But. Yeah. So that's, that's one of the, the common misconceptions or, or perceptions of rum is that it's sweet because it's made from sugar cane. Right. But essentially after the fermentation and distillation process, you're left without sugar. People just have their bad connotations and memories of going to college and drinking Captain. one of two brands, which are highly adulterated and having those wicked hangovers. So you're not gonna experience that with this rum. Yes. A lot of those rums have sugar and flavorings added after distillation. Nice. This does not have that. Yeah, definitely give it a excellent score. Easy drinking. Yeah. Bourbon drinkers definitely come try it. Soon enough, I'll have some little samples that people can try and experience this Venezuelan. Let's get into the next one. Excellent. And price points on these start for these single barrels in the 80s and can go up to 160-ish or so. And of course, we do have a very special uh, Infinity barrel that they have here. That's a yeah. $1,500 bottle. We'll right. talk about that as well. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, next up is from uh, Belize. This is from the Travelers Distillery in Belize. Okay. Uh, the oldest distillery out there, been around since the 1950s. Uh, third generation, family owned, three brothers. Most of the rum that they release is Again, non-age stated or very lightly aged, sweetened, low ABV. Okay. Typically in Belize, they're releasing it at 36% alcohol by right. volume, which in America is not even considered rum. You have right. to be at least 40%. Right. So they had some barrels that just didn't fit the profile for the for the batches they were doing. And so they cast them off to the side, forgot about them for about a decade until Eric, Eric K., the founder of the company, he went out to the warehouse and he's, what's up with these Weller barrels over here? And so he bought a couple 2005, 15 year old barrels. Okay. And he said he was gonna release them at full strength. Yeah. And they thought he was crazy. Yeah. But that, that first release, he did, won the Rumcast podcast rum of the year. Was that a special release that we had? So there was the 1981 that you had, right. which was that release, but further aged in sherry cask. Okay. So initially we did two barrels of just an ex-bourbon 15 year. Okay. And then the distillery with the rest of those barrels they had dumped them in a sherry cask for I believe it was eight more months. 
and they released that as 1981, which is the year of their independence. So that was a very limited and coveted release. Very different. Yeah. Very different. A little funky on the nose. That licorice. Yeah. Uh, that black, that, black yeah. yeah. That, that uh, texture, that even that taste. Yeah. But um, still not the sweetness. No, exactly. Right, so. yeah. 16 years, tropically aged in Belize. They, for a long period of time, were not uh, monitoring their loss because they weren't aging to, to a high degree. And once they finally monitored it, they realized they were losing 13% year over year to evaporation, yeah. which significantly more than you lose in Kentucky or yeah. Yeah. Or like that. So sure. they finally decided to insulate the warehouse, got the evaporation down to 7% year over year, but you're having immense extraction from the wood, from the barrels yeah. in a hot and humid climate over that course of time. Right. So you're going to get all that, again, caramel and vanilla, baking spice. This is just a really refined, really delicious zipper. It's 122 proof, yeah. but drinks yeah. really easy. Yeah, that wouldn't even tell. Exactly. Wouldn't even tell it's dangerously sippable. But usually with the age, if the barrel is good, yeah. you won't, you'll never see a proof. Right? Exactly. So, yeah. So, so it drinks real easy. Yeah. This has been our showstopper award winner, Fred Minnick at the Ascot Awards, gave this platinum. They got double gold in San Francisco. So yeah, it's, this is one that, again, gateway for bourbon drinkers getting yeah. into quality rum. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And what do we have next? Next up is from Australia. Uh, most people don't as associate uh, rum production with yeah. Australia. Yeah, never. <laughs> uh, for fun fact, uh, there's actually more rum distilleries in Australia than in the Caribbean. Oh, wow. Uh, Australia is a gigantic place and it's very expensive to uh, import stuff into Australia. So the locals drink the local juice. Okay. There's a bunch of distilleries. Honestly, a lot of them are not fantastic. This is our favorite. This is from Binley. Again, the oldest distillery in Australia. Been around for, I think they just celebrated 140 years. Okay. There's 100% pot still, aged 10 years. And this one, not fully tropically aged like the last two. This one was six years in Australia. Then it went to the UK for four years for okay. aging. And then it went to New York to be bottled. Okay. Like, so, same proof as the last one, 122. Yeah. And again, we'll drink softer than that. Yeah. And this has a completely different profile. Than I would that. almost think that knows what you're making. Yeah. Yeah. Like really funky. But it's also, once you get on the palate, it, it's got a delicacy to it. But this one, I think, would appeal more to like world whiskey drinkers if you like Irish or single malt scotch, like Space Side or something like that. It's got this kind of coastal sea breeze salinity to it. Yeah. It's got some like nice, like honey, herbaceous floral notes. Actually, when you said coastal, I actually pictured the ocean. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely on the palate. Absolutely. So this rum comes from a region called Queensland, which is the only area of Australia still cultivating cane, and it's just right there on the water. Yeah. So they get their molasses fresh, and it's just a stellar product. Definitely, definitely. I wouldn't. Maybe the space side, space side yeah, scotch drinker. I see that. Yeah, for, yeah. Sure. for sure. For sure. So my scotch drinkers definitely experienced that one. That's a very nice one. Very complex. Opens up on your palate but does a very nice job. Yeah, and these are all meant to be, of course, sipped out of a yep. yep. and just savored over a period of time. Yep. And uh, these really open up in the glass. When yep. you pour them, let them sit for a few minutes, keep nosing every couple minutes yep. and see how it opens up and yep. develops. Yep. And that will hang around on your palate for, for yep. a long time. Right. But what other expression now, about This that? one is actually a barrel pick oh. for Dallas Fort Worth Rum Club. Mm -hmm. yep. I think you only have a handful of bottles left of this, but this is from Hamden Distillery and it's a 10 year Diamond H. Yep. And for rum nerds, mm -hmm. You, yeah, that diamond was, was a thing. For yeah. sure. uh, so if you pick up the, uh, the Hamden's uh, 8 Marks collection, you'll know what Diamond yeah, H is. Yeah. Basically, a thousand ester funk bomb. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah. super long fermentation. Yeah. It's just, this is wild. Yeah, I'm okay. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, that, that's also a palate yeah. record. Yeah, yeah. This is going to be like rotting fruits, like rotting pineapple and banana. It's just, and it's savory and it's just yep. acidity and it's just, it's insane. Definitely. And remember, so we only have a few left. Come to Dallas Rum Club. Come see me. I only have a few balls left. It is a diamond that everybody was asking me about. What else, what other expressions do you have? Well, so we've got a new uh, Barbados from Four Square guys. Distillery. So that's a, a port finished. Yes. So this one, uh, aged eight years in Barbados in ex bourbon barrel, shipped it to New York, and then we dropped it into a port cast for 18 additional months. Okay. So 18 months of New York aging on that. And uh, the color didn't pull from the port at all. Usually if you age it, just even past the 15 month mark, but you'll get that little reddish tint. Yeah. But, yeah, you get some of that when it's in the glass, yeah. but it was like a third use port barrel. Okay. So that's why usually we would do a finish for six to eight months. We did this one a little bit longer just right. to pull more out of the barrel. That's a little bit more spent. But, uh, 110 proof, Definitely. a great budget four square. Yeah. Because most of the four square has gotten into the stratosphere yeah. price wise. But they're not doing stuff like below 60% alcohol anymore. Right. And everything's above 12 years. So right. if you want to get that intermediate, more budget friendly, but still have that classic four square profile, that's the way to go. Definitely. And what else? So we've got uh, another Jamaica. Mm. This is from Clarendon Distillery, also known as Money Musk. This is an eight year high, not as high ester as the Diamond H, right. uh, 250 ester, so about a quarter of what the Diamond H is. But and still, uh, 
you were telling me there's only a few left? Yeah, we're down and we have no more to sell. Our distributor has 18 bottles. You've got two on the shelf Definitely. and this is gone forever. Yep. If there's one you had or you're interested in, now is the time to get it. Definitely. We had five barrels of it. We always try to buy at least four barrels of anything we release. That way it's in the market for a while. We can get it into all the states we're distributed in. Yep. But these are there's a finite amount of this to go around. Yep. We had five barrels, we're down to 18 bottles. Oh, no. <laughs> and also a very affordably priced. This yep. comes, I believe, in the $80 range, okay. last but not least. And again, all these are in stock here in uh, this Louisville store. Yep. Yeah. and probably some of the others. Yes. Yeah. Fiji is another one that's gone away soon. We had a lot of barrels of this. We've got maybe 30 or 40 bottles left with our distributor and then this one. So th this one actually won some awards when it first came, right? Yes, this, I believe it was Rob Report named this one of the top spirits of the century. This has definitely made some accolades. Uh, it's just a phenomenal refined release. 17 yep. years aging, 12 of those in a tropical climate, and it's just baking spice for days. It tastes like Christmas in a glass. You yep. get clove and cinnamon and pepper. Yep. Super what, delicious. What was the other, where, where was it finished at? So you said 12, uh, yeah, 12 five months. years in the UK. Okay. The tradition of independent bottling and rum has typically been buying from a merchant or a broker that's in the UK. Okay. So they buy from different distilleries, age in a temperate climate, but ultimately at the end of the day, they're the ones making the money on it, not the distillery. Right. The distillery sold it when it was either new make or very young right. for a lower price. And then once it reaches maturity, the Europeans are ultimately reaping the reward of it. Yeah. That's why we're trying to change the business model and buy directly from source. Okay. Support the economy of the producers, buy from them at, at its peak. Uh, unfortunately, this distillery does not sell direct. Okay. Same with the Australia rum. That's why it had continental aging is because we couldn't buy rum directly from them. Okay. If we want to have these beautiful expressions, we have to go through other means to get them. Yeah, fine. I know these new ones, uh, these are recently to the market. Absolutely. Right? So, we have four rums and what we call our core. Right. So these ones are intended to be routinely available. Okay. Whereas the single barrels, a barrel might produce right. 200 to 250 bottles. These ones we're doing in batches of 1,000 to 2,000 liters at a time. Okay. We've got a heritage blend, which is the only thing that's a blend of multiple regions. So that's got some Foursquare from Barbados, some Santa Teresa from Venezuela, uh, which we have uh, single barrels from those distilleries. Also has a bit of agricultural rum from uh, Martinique. Okay. So some cane juice rum uh, to go into that blend. Yeah. We've got a Fiji blend, uh, which is a, the younger brother of, of the 17 year. Okay. Um, super funky and vibrant, it makes an amazing daiquiri. Um, and super versatile in cocktails. Uh, the two we have here uh, come from Reunion Island. And for those who are unaware where Reunion is, that's on the other side of the world. Okay. It's about a far, as far away from here as you can get. It's not Caribbean. It's out by Madag Madagascar in the Indian Ocean okay. off the coast of Africa. So they are owned and operated by France. So they do have regulations on how they manufacture their products. Okay. These two rums are even specialty products for them. Primarily, they're shipping bulk rum to France, just lightly aged molasses rum. These two are unaged expressions. Our agricole here, made from cane juice, they only make this a few weeks out of the year. Okay. And it's just, if you've had an agricole rum from Martinique or Guadeloupe, this is a completely different beast. Definitely. You've got a different soil, different climate, different cane varietals. It, it's run through a French Saval still. And this is like briny and savory and vegetal and earthy Definitely. and just super fun. And last but not least is our Grand Arome. So this is a style of rum that there's only two distilleries left in the world still producing. Okay. So to be a Grand Arome, it has to derive from molasses and it has to reach 500 esters, which is like your, again, your flavor compounds you get through fermentation. We mentioned the Diamond H is a thousand esters. This has to reach 500. Okay. So you do a 10 day long fermentation to get up to that. Okay. So this is just funky and weird and just super great to put into cocktail. Definitely. So, yeah, Definitely. these are much more budget conscious, more meant for, they're really unique and special to drink on their own, but they're really intended for cocktail use. Yeah. And now let's talk about this very special Infinity. Yes. Okay, so this is a blend of a 46 and a 22, I believe? So this is a blend from 17 different countries. Okay. And so this was, so Main Rum Company who source, sources rum from all these distilleries and they're the ones that sell to independent bottlers. Right. So when they sell a barrel, sometimes they have casts that they pulled or bottles that they pulled for sampling yes. to try to sell it. Yeah. But once they sold the barrel, they don't need them. Yeah. So 20 years ago, they started putting a bunch of samples into a barrel. Right. So the youngest rum in there is now 20 years old. The yeah. oldest is 47 years old. Right, right. So there's an agricultural rum that's 47 years old in there. There's seven different countries represented, five distilleries that have since shuttered. A lot of it's Guyana heavy, some Enmore and Iflot, some of the old hot stills from when they resided at those old estates. Comes in a beautiful package, yes. the book, 47 pages about every distillery in every country where the rum's sourced from. And it's just a remarkable product. Yeah. We only had 100 bottles, and there's one bottle sitting here in this Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I'm uh, definitely looking forward to somebody enjoying that. Yeah, <laughs> that's one that you, you splurge on and you share with your closest friends. Yeah, definitely, if, if you want to. <laughs> but yeah, I definitely appreciate all the knowledge on the products. And then my viewers know that 
These products are not just for the traditional rum drinker. They are for like if bourbon, scotch, Absolutely. if you're trying to branch out, do something a little bit lighter, do a little something easier, then it definitely would be a, a good choice. Cool. Yeah. Uh -huh. Appreciate sure. your time. Yeah. Great to see you. Great to see you.